So uh, welcome to the Center for Fine Arts, Bozar, uh, for this conversation. Uh, contemporary art and science meet ancient practices of Central Asia. So these days, uh, uh, and uh, well, last days of March, uh, ma around March 2021, um, all across uh, a very vast region from Asia Minor to China, millions of people celebrate the arrival of spring, uh, Nowruz. Uh, it is a symbol of rebirth and renewals, and every year it is a cause for much celebrating every year. And here at Bozar, since 2019, we also invite our audience to uh, celebrate Novruz and uh, thanks to this moment, discover the rich cultures of Central Asia and its neighbors. It is uh, an opportunity for us uh, to dive into the pre-Islamic traditions of this vast region situated along the Silk Roads connecting Europe and Asia. And also to have a glimpse at the contemporary art scenes in places as diverse as Almaty, Tashkent, Dushanbe, Bishkek, Tehran, Kabul. Uh, this year, uh, when celebrations are still tough to organize and when culture remains to be locked online, <laughs> we propose uh, to you to dive into contemporary cinema. Uh, so uh, today is the last day for you to discover some um, uh, four films um, that uh, we made available for you, as well as uh, to meet um, uh, and uh, discover this fascinating contemporary art project called Alma that engages with ancient knowledges of this uh, uh, vast region. So let me present um, to you our guests today. Um, I will begin by presenting Olga Kisilova, artist uh, born in Russia, uh, today, she's a professor of contemporary art at the Sorbonne University in Paris. She's also a director of the International Institute of Arts and Science. And uh, her art work uh, um, hovers uh, between science and art. She's really uh, working exactly at this borderline between uh, science, different sciences, humanities and uh, art sciences and uh, contemporary art practices. So for Bozar audiences, uh, Olga is uh, also known as um, uh, Starts Prize uh, 2020 Grand uh, Prize winner. Uh, her impressive Eden project was exhibited at Bozar this past fall in the context of the uh, Starts Prize exhibition uh, titled Speculating on the Future Through Art and Science. But um, uh, she also uh, will be joined by her colleagues who work with her together on this project in Kazakhstan. And uh, uh, let me shift and present you the second speaker, Jana Spooner. She's an architect. She's a specialist on uh, territorial development, but a curator of different city programs and uh, ecological activist. Um, she's also an art director of Alma Museum at Almaty, Kazakhstan. And the third uh, uh, person joining us, uh, third guest uh, joining us for the conversation is uh, Jana Manbetova. Uh, she is a PhD candidate at uh, Sorbonne. Uh, uh, she also has a rich experience in organizing intercultural projects between Central Asia and Europe for almost 20 years by now. Uh, for instance, uh, to give you an idea, in 2017-19, she initiated and conducted events for art managers from Central Asia. Uh, so uh, building bridges between Central Asia and Europe for uh, several years uh, by now. And um, I'm also happy to present my colleague, Emma uh, Dumartore. Uh, she is the coordinator of Bozar Lab. It is uh, uh, Emma who hosted Olga last year and organized the Starts Prize exhibition. So uh, Emma will join us also to pose um, uh, some questions about uh, the project today. So um, to begin our conversation, uh, I wanted to uh, say a few words about the project uh, that you are uh, launch that you launched in Kazakhstan. So you actually uh, work on a transdisciplinary project that mobilizes sciences, both ancient and uh, contemporary, uh, technology and art, in order to. Uh, well, one of the aims of the project is to preserve the Siever, Sievers apple tree. So um, could you please maybe, uh, maybe I would address first the question to Janna. Uh, could you please maybe give us an idea what is the Sievers apple tree 
And why can we find it only in Kazakhstan today? Okay, thank you for your question. Um, along uh, the Tanchan mountain range on the eastern border of Central Asia, there remain countless scattered uh, ice on and the uh, emotions as a forest. Uh, the millions of years ago, uh, the, where trees, the, <clears throat> um, the whose uh, fruit gave a birth the some of the humanity most powerful myths and legends. From DNA analysis, we know that uh, And this is the moment when the connection does not work well. Is it the, is it the case? Did we lose Jana? Yes, I'm afraid. Pardon, we... pardon, I'm, I'm back. Yes, great. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> Just a sec. Maybe um, I'm change. No, it's perfect. You, you, here. It's here. Okay. Um, what about uh, Frodine analysis? Uh, we don't know. We know. Um, uh, we now know that a pro progen progenitor of the apples of the uh, eat today, uh, apples we eat today, is a wild and apple native the wooded sto stores in Tanshan. The heaven heaven heavenly mountains of the eastern Kazakhstan. The birthplace of the fruit, the symbols of fertility, immortality, love and beauty, wealth and power, uh, knowledge uh, and dimension. And the fruit that provided uh, the name of the city Almaty, of the fatherland of apples. This uh, wild apple in Kazakhstan of uh, call it mouse, uh, it's Latin name, call uh, mouse siversi. Uh, after the German botanical, botanist, mm, the John uh, Jon Sievers, who discovered uh, the species of the, in the late uh, 18th uh, century, uh, even south um, the wild apples here, one species, um, species, uh, the uh, and um, like, uh, now diversity in the size and shape and of trees, many of which are surprise um, uh, um, in in. In Coven, uh, in Covetly, in Coven Ninthly, so and also the apples are uh, them themselves, which are many different shapes, size, flowers, and colors. In this regions, mm, apples uh, were probably first the uh, this uh, this to make it or least uh, deliberately planted. Between uh, 5,000 and 10,000 uh, years ago, gradually, <clears throat> the most uh, the, this miserable variants began uh, transport uh, westward along, uh, along the Silk Road. Wild apple uh, populations are uh, um, scattered uh, southern uh, uh, Central Asia and um, uh, all, almost seeds have been collected at storage seed banks. The species uh, and agreement uh, um, south was of habitat from genetic uh, dilution, dilution. 
the re result of cross population in uh, with an uh, encroaching commercial variants. Genetic uh, special uh, features have slowly but sorry, sorry uh, faded away, and now when we need new input, the genus that uh, might uh, confer this uh, characteristic just aren't there anymore. This is why uh, the wild uh, 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 of your modern apples are vital, and it is uh, the trees on Central Asia uh, highlands. Um, And um, genetic um, that contains the uh, highlands that contains the genetic information that has been lost from which uh, we must cross it again. And commercial development has taken a toll. Sadly, mm, uh, no, no, no. Sorry. Uh, sadly, the part of the heavenly mountains that had uh, suffered of the most in this area close to Almaty, Zaliski, our town. The forest of Tenchan vibrant uh, with uh, foreigners of apples and the commercially significant, but they are also indeed a kind of and um, and cradle of an viable genetic information and our protection for the own sake. Monkey must not was the biblical three knowledge. And I think uh, I'm, I'm, for, I'm trust and this possible, and we need uh, did this. Okay, so this apple, but, what we uh, learned- You understand? Yeah, mm -hmm. so what we learned from you is that this apple is also, uh, itself is a uh, result of many encounters between Europe and Asia. So its name is given uh, after the uh, European scientist. But scientist? At the same, yeah. And at the same time, uh, today, uh, preservation uh, of uh, uh, this apple also allows to maybe rejuvenate or um, uh, revive uh, what is apple in very different parts uh, of the world. So um, I don't know, maybe we should turn to Olga. Um, how does an artist come to a, a subject uh, like that? and takes interest in an apple tree of that kind. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, um, uh, Daria, for your question. And thank you. Thank you very much, Rana, for, for this uh, introduction um, of this uh, wonderful uh, tree. Um, I have some <laughs> problem with sun, which is <laughs> traveling all around. So I'll we'll try to, to stay. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so um, uh, I think I have to, to start by uh, my relation with, uh, with science um, because um, the uh, first approach I had uh, to, uh, to this uh, Sievers apple uh, was a scientific one. And of course, it, it seems sometimes um, quite strange um, uh, except uh, some uh, rare place um, uh, in the world um, devoted to art and science, like Beaux Arts Lab, but usually it, it looks uh, quite strange when an artist uh, work with science. Um, but I think it is um, a, a, like one of the, uh, the major ways uh, today for the contemporary the art is no more um, here to, uh, to make beautiful things. 
it became a um, research discipline and uh, um, the goal of art uh, now it is not to uh, to do something nice but to resolve problems uh, so um, uh, it's not only to resolve but sometimes to point and to resolve problems uh, so it has to be efficient and it has to use um, a appropriate approach so we work with um, for example on, on uh, treatment of data so we work with mathematicians when we work on uh, on trees and plants we work with uh, biologists and uh, and botanists and now we also work on viruses and uh, of course with uh, uh, with medical professions um, so um, by um, this way um, I came to um, to work uh, on uh, endangered uh, organists all around the world, and especially um, these endangered uh, plants and endangered trees. And Sievers Apple is, uh, um, uh, it's like a monument, as Jeanne um, said. Um, it is very important for our, um, our history and our culture, and also for our biological perception of ourselves and of the world all around us. But unfortunately, um, this tree is uh, uh, endangered one uh, today, and uh, um, the uh, eco activists uh, um, uh, like Jeanne and uh, and scientists in um, in Central Asia Asia um, um, are fighting now to save this um, this species to uh, keep it alive again. Um, and um, art is also a way to uh, um, uh, to help um, this um, this struggle uh, to uh, to put the light on, on this uh, endangered space um, you know, to uh, uh, to bring it out of the forest uh, to keep it, of course, in the forest, but uh, to bring out from the forest this idea of this space to to um, bring to um, the large public the knowledge about it. So it is what we, we are trying to do um, through this, this project in Kazakhstan. I think you're absolutely right, Olga, in the sense that art and science projects really uh, have this ambition and uh, really reach the goal of uh, talking to a maximum of audience. And I think this is where the strength of this kind of project lies. It's really the, the idea of raising awareness to the artistic world, but also the scientific world and a large audience uh, by the means of exhibitions, performances, etc. So this was uh, really interesting. And like Emma mentions, it's uh, on one hand, it allows to reach out to these very diverse audiences, but it is also because you managed to put a quite fascinating collective of uh, researchers uh, uh, around uh, projects like that. So I was curious uh, to learn that uh, for, uh, in, for the, in the beginning, uh, in September this year, you organized a performance in the context of this project, uh, which uh, uh, maybe you could also explain a bit more uh, uh, kind of what was the performance to our audiences. But what was interesting that um, uh, you, apart from uh, ecological activists, artists, scientists, uh, uh, botanists involved, uh, right? They were specialists uh, of ancient religions uh, involved. And that's uh, yet another um, uh, world, so to say, right? That you mobilize in this research and this discovery of uh, yeah. a, a species like uh, Sibir's apple that uh, connects us to so many different uh, dimensions of our, our life, like Olga said. So maybe you could say a few words about the performance and about what um, those ancient religions uh, could teach us today or how they could be mobilized for research like yours. So this is a question for Jana, right? Yeah. Maybe that's uh, Jana could uh, speak more about the work method indeed. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> do you hear me now? <laughs> 
Yes. Ah, uh, okay. I uh, would like to thank you very much, Mozar, uh, for inviting and organizing this uh, very important uh, conversation about Nowrizim. It's about Nowriz and uh, to take part in Nowriz film uh, day. Uh, and I um, um, would like to say a few words about the performance. Uh, the performance um, explores the concepts of ancient future knowledge, as we say, as a variant of alternative mind. And the, um, the performance was about uh, how we collect you know, apples of the harvest. And when we collect the harvest, I mean, we, <laughs> uh, all the people, uh, we thank the heaven. And it was the tradition in ancient times, uh, nomads do, and uh, the gardeners thank heaven for the, for the harvest. And the performance um, was um, accompanied by sound composition, uh, performed by Kobus sacred Kazakh music instrument. And I will come to it uh, a little bit later. This performance was called uh, Alma, and it took place on the territory of homological garden uh, of the Kazakh National um, Research Institute on fruit and vegetables. And I would like to take this opportunity and to thank our partner, the Kazakh National uh, Institute, and its director, Terik Sobikov, who was very much of help in organizing this performance. And um, the, in the performance, we invited the, the so-called Siku Shaman. Uh, it's Shisa, she's Shaman. Her name is Sultana Tsushimova. She's a well-known activist in Almaty. And she was very active in saving the Kogjelau National Park where these wild uh, apple orchards mainly grow. Uh, the music was especially also um, composed by Gujana Manjo. She's a well-known uh, composer uh, in Kazakhstan. And also we were lucky to have uh, Iskander Naringetov. He, is, uh, he was the operator director of this video art. Uh, Iskander Narigetov is our um, leading film operator in Central Asia. Uh, for example, in 2020, he was awarded the uh, best operator in Karina Film Festival in Italy. Um, the producer of the, I would like to say a few words about the producer also. Uh, Azar Jandosovan, she is a well-known figure in Kazakhstan. Uh, she um, had the public fund called Almalu Jumak. And Almalu Jumak in English stands for Garden of Eden. And her fund uh, mainly um, struggled for, for revival of scissors apples and apport apples. Uh, the creator of was me, and I would like to again to thank the um, Prince Claus Fund, you know, from the Netherlands and the Goethe Institute uh, for their support, for their support of the coming research stage uh, that will be accomplished by Olga Silova, Sargon Institute, and International Institute of Art and Science. In in Kazakhstan, and hopefully this, this summer. And the project is very important because it covers not only the issue of the artistic um, and scientific uh, solution of the problem of climate change, and also the issues of biodiversity, and it is supported by the UNESCO Office here in Kazakhstan, and also by the National Committee of UNESCO 
of the of the government of Kurdistan. And um, the project is called Alma. Uh, Alma stands for apple. Uh, in many Turkic uh, languages, it's different a little bit different. Alma in Uzbek, for instance. But at the same time, it's very interesting. Uh, it's a mock of words. Alma means don't touch, don't take. So it's very close to the, it's very symbolical to, for our event project. So the main goal of you of this creative performance was to demonstrate the sacred meaning of apples for Almaty, for Kazakhstan, and for the whole planet. Uh, in general, in the Kazakhstan is the most money level. And it's a, 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 I must say that it's very important for us to raise awareness about uh, cedar apples and the, its endangered situation. Um, and um, probably not all, because your audience doesn't know very much about Kazakhstan, it's just a few words about the flora of Kazakhstan, and Kazakhstan has a valuable gene pool of fruits, berries, grapes, and wild fruits especially. Kazakhstan has a, a variety of natural zones with the richest flora on its territory, and thousands of varieties and hybrids of fruits, berries, and grapes are collected in pomological gardens, botanical gardens, and wildlife reserves in the mountain. The flora is also very unique in the mountain region where more than 300 valuable wild growing species of fruits and berries grow. It's apples, pears, apricots, uh, raspberry, currants. And for many of them, Kazakhstan is considered the center of genetic origin. Uh, despite the serious efforts, of the community everywhere to preserve the plant resources of our planet, this problem continues to be very acute. According to the experts, in the middle of the 21st century, we might lose 60% of all species. And given that all plant species are unique and priceless, their disappearance uh, leads to catastrophic consequences. Uh, therefore, uh, the conservation of biodiversity and especially agrobiodiversity uh, is currently the most important problem. Wild plants are the particular interest that are particular interest because of their relative to the and origins for cultivated plants. Um, they contain a valuable gene pool and important for food security, not only um, nationally here in Kazakhstan, but also internationally, uh, globally. And uh, the most significant representatives of this um, group of plants are fruits, are wild fruit species. This civet apple tree, and also we have the wild apricots. Uh, they grow in the wild forest, mountain forest, mountain orchards in the south and southeast of the country, uh, in Zungar and the Yuriska Latao, that are the part of the Tianshan uh, mountain. And the archaeologists say that they existed, as Jana said, 165 million years ago. It was in the time of uh, Cretaceous. So we'd like now uh, to say a few words about Singrianism. Uh, and why we put some elements of symbolism. Yeah, I wanted to ask oh. about that. Indeed, because it's fascinating. You use this old symbolics uh, from, uh, um, maybe you could say a few words to our audiences also to explain what is Tengrianism and uh, how, yeah. and why it is interesting to, uh, because you explain the, the part about assembling all these different disciplines around a project of uh, that aims uh, to preserve uh, a very valuable species. I think this is comprehensible for many art and science projects. But of course, mobilization of these ancient practices and uh, ancient knowledges is uh, something that is very particular 
about your performance and your approach. So if you could, uh, and maybe then uh, Olga maybe also could uh, step in. And uh, so, uh, Jana, do you want to say a few words about Tengrenism still? Oh, yeah, I would like to continue, if you don't mind, and tell about the um, elements of the, um, of the rituals of Tengrenism that we use. And one of the huge mountains in the Union of Kazakhstan is Kinshan Range, and they're shared with China and Kazakhstan. And these uh, snow, uh, snow peaks are uh, um, considered sacred in Central Eurasian region. Uh, of secret for Tengrenism. Uh, Tengrenism is rooted in the ancient Mongolian and Turkic uh, language, I mean, traditions and language. Turkic Tengri and Chinese Tian are Tengrenism, yeah? are linguistically related and that means um, heaven and uh, the God. So Tengrenism, it can be translated as the internal mountains uh, in honor of God. Um, so coming back to the performance, to, uh, the, some elements that we uh, used, like first of all, is Kobis and Shaman playing on Kobis. So you know the Kobis, yeah, it's a string folk music instrument. Uh, eventually today, they answer the violin. Uh, the world was, um, no, the tank, tank realism, um, is believed that the world was created from sound. And the, our ancestors believe, you know, I think not only our ancestors, it's a common knowledge of the most oriental cultures. And we usually say that in order to understand Tengri, uh, we must at least once hear the performance of Kobus. Uh, Kobus and Tengri are it's almost the same very much connected. And uh, when you hear the Kobis, you hear the music of the sounds of longing for eternal being, for the absolute. And um, at the end, it will turn to the consolation and with a light sadness. Uh, so, um, The, the roots of this, um, let's say, the education performance uh, is a um, tradition to worship the tree. Uh, when shamans uh, appealed to the spirit of the tent tree, uh, in order to save his God, you know, to save his, his child, also uh, the Rituals is a starting point, and uh, that's why the, our art player, performer, uh, was, um, was uh, inspired by this plant to unveil the family's spirituality. The um, Kazakh, not only Kazakh, but all other nomadic ancestors who lived in the harmony with nature, use string instruments made of natural materials, of course, like leather, wood, bone. Folk instruments have unique and rich sounds. They were imitating the nature, the howl of wool, for instance, um, can be the, you call the ratatat when the horses uh, run. The folk music in the step was a way of symbolic inflection. Uh, between human and the non-human and nature. The musician directed the, the its play not to the audience, but to the nature. Rather than to the nature, rather than to the, to the audience. Uh, it, you know, say that the Tengrian path is Kubis, and the Kubis is listened not only by people, but by plants, by animals, by the water, by the wind, by the clouds, by the mountains. And Kubis uh, speaks to the world about the divine, eternal beginning. It's impossible to listen to the Kubis performance 
on a daily basis, every day. Very sacred instrument. And uh, in traditional society, it sounded on a very occasional uh, event. Uh, because the, the traditional music special performance on this high uh, spiritual power that is um, to be hiding, hidden as long ordinary people. And then um, our ancestors used performance on this, um, such as shamans, they feel the people. Um, as I said, it's a very sacred and religious instrument, not only for Turkic peoples, but for Siberian uh, peoples as well, Turkic Mongolian peoples. And so, then, so, so if yeah. I follow you, so it's really a very unique ancestral technique to enter into dialogue with very different forms of life, but that just could not be profaned in some way. It's really about uh, this the dimension that you mentioned, the sacred dimension of this practice or of this uh, technique is something that uh, needs also to be uh, uh, integrated in the way we, we use this technique today in some way, right? Mm -hmm. I think we have Jana yeah. with us again. Are you here with us, Jana? Yes, but uh, uh, I I close uh, video, I, I'm here, but I close okay. video for listen, okay, for good yeah, lessons. No problem. But Jana, I also wanted to ask you, I was triggered earlier by uh, the use of the term eco-activism, and I was wondering, do you consider yourself uh, also as an architect, uh, an eco-activist? And um, how would you describe uh, um, the relation you build between eco-activism um, uh, and the preservation of the environment and uh, your work with Olga as an artist? Um, so how do you put all this together? Maybe it's an opportunity to jump to Olga and Olga could share her perspective on this entanglement between very specific ancient knowledges and practices, eco-activism, uh, uh, art uh, 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 practices and how you approach it. Um, so, um... I work in these trees uh, all around the world. I realized that there was something um, very important still um, kept in uh, different countries, like, um, uh, like for example, Brazil or New Zealand, which is a kind of um, ancient knowledge about how to be connected with, um, with nature. Um, and uh, um, when I discover uh, Kazakhstan and um, their um, very, very special uh, culture and very special traditional art, um, like uh, usually um, I'm not specially interested in, in, in kind of uh, folklore, uh, but in this, um, especially um, uh, musical tradition um, they have, in Kazakhstan uh, with all um, instruments which are uh, a kind of continuation of the nature, um, which are not for the public, but to be connected with, with the nature, to, to make it uh, more open, to make it stronger. Um, I found we have to, uh, to learn from, from it. And um, sometimes this kind of knowledge can, can bring us some, some tools um, which exist since, um, uh, since uh, uh, thousands of years. And um, then we don't have to, to reinvent it, uh, uh, reinvent it uh, because um, our actual um, science, it is, um, a lot of um, inventions of uh, uh, like um, uh, some tools which are which are uh, not so rich. Uh, maybe maybe more maybe 
poor than um, the same kind of tools which existed before. <laughs> I'm struggling again with that, <laughs> which is coming in front of me during <laughs> the conversation. And what is funny, it is like the only possibility to see you. It is to, to put myself instead of a big pine tree I have <laughs> in front of my um, my window, and then I have a, um, a little shadow, so you you see me like uh, different uh, different colors and different lights. But uh, at least uh, when I I am protected by my pine tree, I can see uh, see you. So, so trees are also... your allies. Trees yeah. are your and our allies. <laughs> yeah, Even exactly. to record this conversation. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. Olga, what would be the first uh, reaction of some biologist or scientist that you um, that you contact in the frame of your project? Um, how do you usually approach um, the scientists? Um, in fact, the first, uh, very first approach um, in, in um, the frame of the Eden project was when um, I had a, a public commission to make a monument uh, for a tree which was died, but I, um, uh, I decided I don't want to make uh, like a, uh, a bronze or, 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 or marble monument of this tree, but I would like to replace it by a tree uh, which is quite same, but which can stay alive. So uh, my approach to the scientist was to uh, uh, to, uh, to like uh, help. <laughs> I have a tree which is dying, and I would like to make it alive. Uh, it was the maybe only one um, uh, case when I approached scientists. But since we realized this project and since we are working all around the world with different trees in different situations um, by helping them, now the, um, it is uh, like um, the inverse situation and uh, they are mostly scientists who approach us, our team, um, to uh, join them in their research in local problem they have with the plants that they work with. And um, interesting. Yeah. And what do you think they are looking for when they approach um, an artist? Uh, in fact, um, when we when um, we approach um, our team. We not only approach an artist, we approach a multidisciplinary team um, who has uh, uh, some scientific technology and, and uh, some, some special know-how, which is uh, growing and growing. Um, so um, sometimes um, we only approach us from this pragmatic point of view to have uh, like um, to have help or just another opinion uh, considering the problem um, uh, they, they, they have to front in, in that situation. Uh, but um, when art comes with science, um, it is also a um, quite interesting situation because uh, art point new questions, a new problem and bring uh, sometimes um, different, uh, like a different light uh, on the situation and propose um, some uh, different solution, uh, maybe uh, more related to, to the society. For example, like uh, what Jeanne described it very, uh, very well, it is this um, music could be interve intervention which uh, helped us to, to connect um, people and audience with this nature and this tree. Indeed, it's a beautiful example of uh, artists becoming uh, a f this power force of federating very different uh, technologies, knowledges, uh, techniques, uh, uh, questions, questions that often uh, cross the boundaries either of disciplines or of arts. In this way, uh, finding uh, yourself really at the intersection of, of so many different academic fields, but also um, uh, arts 
right? So uh, uh, suddenly in the Kazakh project going at this encounter with um, very particular musical tradition uh, that um, otherwise would stay a bit isolated in the world uh, uh, of um, um, early uh, modern music, right? It would be recognized only in this particular milieu uh, for, uh, and it will be a bit uh, cut off from uh, uh, contemporary reflection about uh, climate change and biodiversity. So it is a very um, uh, inspiring example of how these very different knowledges, very different ways of seeing, and also ways of entering into dialogue with very different uh, life forms, uh, different um, corpuses of knowledge. Um, so thank you very much for sharing this um, way of seeing and the way of connecting um, uh, man to nature, uh, which I think on this, um, in the context of Novruz really um, is a meaningful reflection uh, around these days when we want to um, celebrate rebirth, renewal, this cycle of life. So your reflection about um, how to make this tree survive, right? That drives all your project. In that sense, I think connects very beautifully to this um, larger need to celebrate life and celebrate life still while we cannot totally do it um, yeah, all together. So I would like uh, to conclude to thank uh, once again, uh, uh, Olga, thanks Jana, thank also Jana who is still with us, but uh, her connection unfortunately today was a bit poor. But uh, I have uh, a, a, pardon my question. <laughs> Maybe I, uh, I'm answering. Yeah, you, sure. Uh, if you f if you feel you can, uh, uh, if the connection is good enough and you hear us. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. it's, uh, yes, let's, uh, let's uh, try to, uh, because we Maybe, will. Maybe. Uh, Maybe uh, to, um, you, you, you question Emma about uh... so the question was about um, your relation to eco activism yeah. because I think it's quite um, it's an important concept that yes. we hear about a lot these days and uh, I was wondering also as an architect how do you relate to this concept? Okay, um, I started about. Uh, Say it's a, a pro project of Mom Museum. And uh, um, all projects in, of our Mom Museum have a goal that of mission statement. We preserve um, memory of the father of Abel's and encourage remembering the past of the, in order to keep all future. I think it's uh, important to spread information about uh, the original father of apple trees and the sound language, um, south language of art, the most in, in interactive of memorable uh, language. We care most about creation and uh, particip uh, participation in the projects. Um, at the place where, where art, science, media, and uh, new technologies meet. For us, uh, important to deliver uh, a message to people about um, in in importance uh, of uh, preserving ecology and form of the wild apple trees, mouse uh, severity. We want um, we we want to show how change in ecology can cause a chain reaction at uh, in uh, influence each of directly and indirectly. We want uh, to show how millions of years of evolution can be destroyed in the just few human generation. We think an important um, um, to enable in a dialogue uh... And here we lost Janna again.
Pardon. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah. You oh, are sorry. Us. It's a it's just crazy. <laughs> Don't worry. It is. So. Um, uh, we think important to enable a dialogue between eco activism, art, and scientific uh, knowledge and preservation in environment. And we will give one example. The one the organized uh, of this museum, um, Ajaj and Oseva and myself have worked uh, for eight uh, years uh, to protect uh, a mountain area called uh, Kogjalau from developments, developers. Uh, this uh, um, beautiful place, is uh, whose name uh, means the heavenly valley is uh, uh, only area uh, near the city that has um, um, not been urbanized. It has many types of uh, plants that are in the red book including wild apple trees, mouse severses, severses uh, and species, species uh, of animals on the verge of extinction, the snow leopard. We have carried uh, out action Janna, we lose um, you. Pardon, I'm back. I will. <laughs> we have carried kind of action, a difference on this uh, valuable place. And this caused citizen to join uh, the difference. Um, the support led of government uh, and preside, uh, and uh, government and president uh, deciding in 2020, uh, last year, you know, uh, to stop uh, development project where we we protested. Civil uh, society won, civil society won victory. And here we are losing you again, but I think it was really, uh, thanks very yes. much for- uh, I, was... I, I, I just, <laughs> I'm finishing. Yeah. Oh my God. Civil yeah. society to one. I would like you, just, civil... just uh, I, I just realized about it. Uh, yeah. Mm. A few minutes ago, then um, behind the area, the tree we can see, uh, like my, my first thought was it was a tree from, from Darius Garden, but it is a silver apple tree uh, from Kogjanao. I took, um, uh, I photographed it two years ago in the spring when I visited um, Kazakhstan. And uh, it is yeah. uh, exactly maybe uh, maybe the day or maybe the day before our project yeah, yeah. just started in Kazakhstan. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much, Daria, for this <laughs> idea to bring and, it uh, in the conversation. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I think so one, uh, you, you listen to me? You, you listen to me? Yeah, we hear you. Okay. Uh, society won, won a victory and art projects were No, uh, so, no, Jeanne, we have to give up. Uh, connection betrays us. Connection betrays yes. us. But yes, pardon, uh, pardon, pardon. Yeah. I'm, I'm back. Uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm finished. Uh, uh, I have to say, uh, civil society won a victory and the projects when an important part uh, of the victory uh, have uh, 
art project, you know. Uh, and therefore, uh, we uh, were very, very pleased uh, to meet uh, Olga Kisilova, who works with many very similar projects. And from last year, we started joint project with Olga and with uh, uh, participation uh, and Jana Mambetova. And we are confident uh, that a wonderful collaboration will help attention with uh, biblical um, three knowledge. And um, I think uh, uh, this uh, collaboration uh, uh, give us second victory for helping um, um, about uh, this trees, tree. Yeah, thank you. Great, great, John. Because thank you for reminding us that uh, uh, Central Asian heritage is much larger ju than just uh, monuments in stone, right? So the tree that uh, you brought to our attention, right? The tree that is behind me, it is as monumental and as important uh, to celebrate uh, uh, as uh, any tangible um, heritage uh, is. And second uh, important reminder, Emma asked you, uh, how do eco-activism and architecture relate? And you seem to suggest that it's of course very important to remember that um, it's not always by acting and building that we can uh, act as an architect or as an activist, but um, listening and uh, protecting some of the unbuilt spaces the way they are uh, is also our way to contribute to the well-being well, of our communities. So it's, uh, I think it's a, indeed a very important uh, reminder to all of us. I see that we are running out of time and uh, it's a fascinating conversation that I, I propose we conclude and that we will continue and take it further uh, into um, uh, the future. So on behalf of Bazaar, we would like to once again, thank you for joining us. Wish you also good luck with advancing with this project. And we really hope that one day we will be able to present it uh, and welcome you in Brussels, uh, not in this virtual space of um, uh, online conversations, but uh, 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 in Brussels at the Center for Fine Arts. Uh, thanks, also, Emma, for joining us and uh, uh, stay tuned uh, and uh, hope to see you soon in Brussels. And happy Nauri. And happy Nauri. <laughs> happy Nauri. <laughs> happy Nauri. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. Bye. Sorry, bye bye. My, uh, it's fine. <laughs> Thank. Okay. Bye. Bye.